Hello guys and welcome to today's episode. This will be the first video where we will solve the problem with Java. As always, I will start with reading the problem to you. Floor number. Vasya goes to visit his classmate Petya. Vasya knows that Petya's apartment number is N. There's only one entrance in Petya's house and the distribution of apartments is the following. The first floor contains two apartments. Every other floor contains x apartments each. Apartments are numbered starting from 1. From the first floor, for example, apartments on the first floor have numbers 1 and 2. Apartments on the second floor have numbers from 3 to x plus 2. Apartments on the third floor have numbers from x plus 3 to 2 times x plus 2, and so on. Your task is to find the number of floor on which Petya lives. Assume that the house is always high enough to fit at least n apartments. You have to answer t independent test cases. Input. The first line of the input contains one integer t, with t between 1 and 1000, the number of test cases. Then t test cases follow. The only line of the test case contains two integers n and x, with n bigger than 1, bigger or equal than 1, sorry and x smaller or equal to 1000. The number of Petya's apartment and the number of apartments on each floor of the house except the first one. There are two apartments on the first floor. Output. For each test case, print the answer, the number of floor on which Petya lives. Here at the bottom, we have some test cases and some notes to it. For example, consider the first test case of the example. The first floor contains apartments with numbers 1 and 2. The second one contains apartments with numbers 3, 4 and 5. The third one contains apartments with numbers 6, 7 and 8. Therefore, Petya lives on the third floor. Why is that? Because n is 7 and x is 3. That means the number of Petya's apartment is 7 and the number of apartments on each floor is x, so it's 3. Let's, let's take this information and let's write first of all some test cases with j unit. We start with adding some new j unit test case. Now we will take every test case, so this is one test case, this is the second, the third and fourth and write one test case for each. To write these test cases, we need our base structure from our solution. Therefore, we will create a new Java class and call this class solver, create it. And in the solver, we will have a function. And in this uh, function, we will return an integer. And at the moment, we just return 0. Now we can take this to write our test cases. Of course, we have to import our solver. We need to adapt our function with taking two arguments, int n and int x. Here we can give now the 7 and the 3. And now we assert that our result is equal to 3. Let's check if the test case is running. With right click, 
run as JUnit tests. We get an error. This is because our result is not equal to 3. Oh, I think we have, uh, we should change this numbers here. So 3 is not equal to the result. But you see, we get as an answer here 0 and expect that this is a 3. Let's write the other test cases and then go for the implementation. Now we are finished with writing our test cases. Let's go for solving the algorithm. We need to find out the number of floor on which Petya lives. And we know that the first floor always contains two apartments. That means we have one special case first of all. If n, so the number of Pitya's apartment, is smaller or equal to 2, then we know that our result is 1. Let's just change it here. We want to return the result. We get an error here because the variable isn't initialized. And if we don't go in the if routine, then we don't have an initialized value here. But we'll write the else case. Okay, now let's go to the other part. If n is bigger than 2, then we know that the next floors contain of x apartments on each floor. That means we have to find out the floor with apartment n. Therefore, we first of all say our result is equal to n minus 2. So this is the number of the apartment minus the two apartments on the first floor divided by x. This means we check how many floors are needed to fit the n minus 2 in it. We must not forget that we have a special case here where the result is 1. So we have to add this here because we subtracted the first floor here. Let's run our test cases with this code. And we see we have two failures, but two pass tests. Test 2 and test 3 fit. Why do they fit? They fit because we have here an integer division. Let's go for, the f for one example. Let's look at test 3. There we have n22 and x5. That means we have here 22 minus 2 is 20. 20 divided by 5 is 4. But we get problem at test 1 and test 4. For example, test 1 we have n is 7 and x is 3. 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 divided by 3 is not an integer, so we get a float, but when we divide by 3, we get 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, and therefore we see here that we get the result 2. Therefore we have to make a trick. First we know that we have a float division, and we will have an in cast 
where we cast our result to an integer, but we have our float division in here. One other thing we need, we need to round up our result. For example, if we get 1.6, then it's the second floor and not the first floor. Therefore, we need math.seal. Let's go for our test cases once again. And we see all test cases ran without an error. That means our algorithm is correct here. Now we want to submit it to code forces. Therefore, we need some more code. First, we need to read in T, and then we need a loop to go through all test cases. Let's write this down. To make this a little bit easier, we will write our main function in this file here. Normally, if you develop object-oriented, you would make another main file where you, or a main class where you have your main function. What do we need to do? We need first of all a scanner where we can read in the input for the tests. We have to import our scanner from Java Util. Then we read the first number. And it's T. Then we write a loop. And in this loop, we read in N. And we read in X. And now we print out our function with the two values N and X. For being able to use this function, we have to make it static. Let's delete this comment. And now take this code and submit it to CodeForce. And we see the solution was accepted. Before we go back to the code, just one additional information. When you submit a solution, you can submit files too. So we could submit this file here. When you get a runtime exception, it's sometimes because of this package information here. Just delete the package information and then maybe your code is running. I have these problems and I don't want you to run in these problems. Now let's look to the code. What is interesting? What have we learned today? First of all, to read an information, you always can use the scanner that is in the Java Util information. System in here is the command line or the next argument that is read in. The next interesting part is, in my point of view, the map seal, where you can round up your division. If you have any comments, any ideas on how to improve the videos, just let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up, subscribe to my channel to not miss any other videos. And tell me if you would like to see more videos using Java or if you prefer Python for these videos. Thank you for watching. See you at the next video. Goodbye.